Who am I? Why am I here? Where is here? These are the fundamental questions mankind has asked since the moment we came into existence. Many explanations to these questions have been offered over the years, usually by religion or science. In Western society, the explanations offered by these two groups usually contradict each other, and as a result, many people continue to pursue these fundamental questions. In many cases, spirituality has been divorced from science and organized religion with disastrous consequences. For centuries, Western religions have sought to suppress both science and spirituality. This applies particularly to the spirituality of indigenous and ancient cultures. This agenda has been made clear from the burning of the library in Alexandria to the continuing slaughter of native peoples and the destruction of indigenous cultures around the world. Mainstream science, on the other hand, after emerging from centuries of repression, seemingly seeks to denounce religion and along with it spirituality. Scientists began stating that the human condition was one of biomechanics alone. This renouncing of spirituality and ethics by science has led to a quagmire of degradation. This is a result of scientists asking, is it possible, as opposed to, is it morally and ethically just? For instance, it is possible to split atoms, but it is not morally and ethically just. It is only when one unifies the concepts of science and spirituality that one begins to see the real nature of the universe. Reality is comparable to the concept of holographic illusions. This is very similar to what ancient and indigenous cultures have been describing for millennia. Holograms are photons projected through an interference pattern to create a seemingly three-dimensional object. Perhaps many of you are saying to yourself, okay, but a hologram has no physical substance and the world around me does. Perhaps you are thinking, hell, I can taste it, smell it, hear it, and touch it, so the world must be real. How can the universe be an illusion similar to a hologram? What do holograms have to do with ancient and indigenous wisdom? Let's start by examining one such idea, a hermetic teaching ascribed to Hermes Trimagestus, as above, so below. This describes perfectly the fractal and holographic nature, not only of the universe, but the human body as well. Each cell contains all the DNA information necessary to create an identical copy of the whole organism. The same can be said for fractals and holograms. In each part, the whole is contained. Break a holographic image in half, and you do not get half an image you get a smaller version of the whole. Much research has been done by Nassim Haramin and others regarding the fractal nature of the universe and the scaling laws to which it conforms. The universe, including all life forms, sentient, non-sentient, and non-living substances, conform to the fractal nature of reality. Changes in any level of the system affects the structure of the whole. On a subatomic level, the similarities between the nature of holograms and the nature of subatomic particles is even more pronounced. Subatomic particles behave in ways that we, from a macroscopic perspective, perceive not only as confusing, but also in many cases seemingly random. An interesting experiment into the nature of subatomic particles, waves, and wavicles is the double slit experiment. It was determined that subatomic particles can manifest either as a wave function or as a particle. Furthermore, it was discovered that the action of measuring or observing the particles seemed to be the key in the collapse of the wave function. Think about that for a moment. The observer caused the wave function, which generates an interference pattern, to become a physical particle simply by measuring it. Many of the greatest minds in physics have contended over the years the role which consciousness or observation plays in the behavior of subatomic particles. The Copenhagen interpretation is one such argument discussing the nature of quantum phenomena. The similarities between the particle springing into and out of superposition from a wave interference pattern of possible locations to a particle with a definite place in time space as a result of the application of conscious energy and a hologram 
projecting a seemingly three-dimensional image based on light projected through an interference pattern is astounding in its implications. The difference in substantiality between a hologram and reality has to do with the energy feed and the receiver. With regard to holographic reality, consciousness is the energy source and your DNA is the receiver. Even what we perceive as solid objects are all manifestations of wave energy forms. The atoms, which make up the densest rock, are mostly empty and the subatomic particles within them are winking into and out of existence as they jump valence shells. Our perception of such solid objects is only the brain's interpretation of the electrical and biochemical signals it is receiving via our five senses. Therefore, solid objects, or our perception of them as solid, is an illusionary interpretation of varying frequencies by our DNA and brain. It has become increasingly evident that the energy that powers the universe, which some call the unified or zero-point field, and others call God, is consciousness. It is this consciousness, projected through the interference pattern of energy waves, that give rise to us, all that we perceive, and that which we do not. It can therefore be said that we are all a manifestation of the consciousness from which the universe arises. This consciousness is who we are, what we are, and it is also where we are. Like all energy, consciousness is never gained or lost, it simply changes form. When you tap into the part of yourself that is infinite consciousness, you see that the physical form is just a receiver. The real you is a moat of infinite consciousness.